There were also I gotta, some. I gotta ask. Because uh, because you you brought up the Steam intro video, uh, uh-huh. is that guy still stuck in watching the entirety of Shrek <laughs> before his Steam Deck? And welcome back to Linux Teamcast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Omland Ven, and joined every week by Jordan Swang there in the middle and Pedro Mateus. Hello over there, standing late. Together with your Shadow Realm Dynamic, watching us live, helping us form. You know him, you love him. Two Kane by Rakita Kane, Voltron. Gentlemen, I know Jordan and I, we finished up our uh, next to last episode of Wizards and Shit, which is our House of Dragons uh, Rings of Power podcast that we do. We put it out for patrons. And man, that was fun. We're excited for next week. Uh, yeah, I, 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 ho- I hope we get more feet. More than 30,000 feet, man. 30,000 yeah. feet. For, so, yeah, flying over 40,000 feet, baby. Right. In the pre-show, I think we kind of confirmed, uh, I had a little bit of a theory that Intel made like six of the 770 16 gig cards, enough to like seed them to YouTubers and maybe put four up on Newegg because they're not on eBay yet. But like if, <laughs> if, if if you knew if you had one and you couldn't find it on eBay, you'd be trying to scalp it. Mm-hmm. So there's that. Speaking of eBay, though, prices have finally returned to semi normalcy, right, Pedro? Like they're they're getting like okay, like I could closer f- to the actually before time. find yeah. The, if if you are on Discord, you probably noticed that I bought a new laptop. Well, <laughs> technically in box, but not new. But yeah, no, it was very very cheap, which you couldn't get for the longest time. Those were like two hundred plus pounds. Yeah, ah, <laughs> a camera. Like this is a video thing that I've had in my head for like two years now. Because guess what? DSLRs, video cameras, they went and they've just stayed there. And all of a sudden, like, this is a really cool thing that you can do an HDMI hack from Linux and rewrite the firmware. I was like, oh, this would be a fun thing. And I love a good value thing for people. But that camera has been so crazy expensive. Like, there's no value in that. You know, we, we what was that, like 980s? We were going for like 200 bucks at one point, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. So that's finally coming back down. I think I'm going to yoink one of those. And uh, that's going to be a fun, fun little project for everybody. And I even found a GUI to do it under Linux, which is using the TK tool set. Remember those boxes? Oh, little, boy. Little diamonds. Yeah. yeah like, mm-hmm. ooh, it's been a while since I've seen that. Doing that on the audio front, I finished that Taskam 1608 video. Turns out that thing's way cooler than it has any right to be, especially for the price. It's kind of a niche audience, but it's got all the built-in DSP and stuff like that. I'll get that up for patrons. Uh, take an early look at it tomorrow when I get all this nonsense up and post let me know what you think about it. How about you, Burning Man, Svang? Oh, uh, I, I got I got a little crispy. There we go. Yeah. Bad so uh, yeah, a little bad crispy. Uh, turns out, uh, four hundred twenty-five degree Fahrenheit oven, hot door, Warm. very very hot. Yes. Um, no, but uh, on vacation that started. Um, on Friday, and I slept through the entire day yesterday, which was pretty nice. Pretty tight. Yep. I, we, I feel, oh, yeah, we feel finished really back good. for Brad, too. We did. Yeah, we, we got through the Children of the Worm DLC. Uh, we, we thought that there'd be a lot more resistance given how part one of that um, <laughs> went, so but poorly, yeah, and but and then, quickly. And then somehow we, we managed to pull some competence out of our ass and uh, finish off the DLC. So yeah, now I got now I like my now I gotta actually go back to what the hell am I gonna do on Thursday afternoons? Ooh. Mm. Yeah, so <laughs> so uh brain on that. Pedro, I did see that you got a is there anything special that was unique about this laptop or were you just feeling <laughs> an itch? Uh, that I uh, actually had a request for a laptop from one of Nori's old um, um work colleagues. And basically, they they don't have another computer at this point, so it's like, okay, I'll give you the most powerful laptop that I have, because that's it, that's your only option, so here you go. It is very, very trying financial times, but that was also the laptop that I was using to carry around with me. It was, you know, it's the most powerful one, so it was the one I was using the most. So uh, that one turned out to be uh, apparently cheap. It's an HP uh, 14S with the Ryzen... uh, 3250U. Uh, it all it comes with like the basic um, configuration with four gigs of RAM and a 128 gigabyte SSD. But I have 32 gigabytes of RAM that I can put in, <laughs> mm. and uh, a bigger SSD. So I'm just gonna do that. But yeah, the edit for like 65 pounds. 
it's pretty good. That's 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 pretty good. <laughs> Do you expect it to work? Uh, I hope so. At least according to the description that the uh, seller on eBay gave, uh, it was. It is in box. It has the original box. It has all of the things, and it didn't get a lot of use. So we'll see. Because I know I run into this more often than I should. I'll freely fucking admit it. That especially with like audio stuff, I'll pass two things because I want to get a better deal. Not necessarily because I need a better deal. I need to buy it, but I want to do the victory lap mm-hmm. of like, oh, you'll never believe what I can. I know no one cares, but I do. Yeah, no, that one, uh, I'd been tracking that listing for a while because, yes, it's a newer Ryzen laptop, and I figured if it ever dropped, like, below 100 pounds, I'd buy it. But the seller's like, 150, 150, 150, so I, like, 60. And Mm. instead of just outright denying it, came back with uh, an offer for 100. It's like, sorry, it's, uh, those were, like, the cheapest Ryzen laptops when they were new. It's not worth that much. Oh, come on, you said, like, like (laughs) 60.99. (laughs) <laughs> so i i'll take it for that that was a significant chunk of money off so i'll take it all right <laughs> how about taking us to a land where a gelatinous horse is still with us in spirit at least yeah sure i'm just gonna put on my john delancey clothes give it a little snap and introduce you to the steam I love installing entirely separate demons to run software. Don't you, Ben? I summon them, but uh, <laughs> allegedly. Um, but that's not the demons we're talking about. No, we're talking about something more vile and dark than anything from the ninth. There, how many layers are in that? Nine, n- n- nine layers of hell. I thought it was yeah. like thirteen. Uh, the center's no. cold, right? The the center has the devil, uh, or no, it has, has uh, Judas sitting in a giant pile of shit in front of Satan, who has like three heads, and he's yeah, all it's like, probably nah. refrigerated, man. You wouldn't want to smell that, right? So <laughs> Pro- probably not. I don't know. He's the devil. Clean segue from shit to snap. Uh, the easier way to install Steam on Linux gets bleeding edge graphics. And you know what? We're not going to be shitting on Snap. However, you don't want to mess around with this if you have the Nvidia cards. But my first thought with this was why jordan and pedro are gonna fucking hit you over the head with that because i'm i'm on debian like pseudo app install steam and i'm done but you know what if you do have that need for a bleeding edge mesa it might be an option question mark i was uh thinking help me out with this uh what's the big difference between this and say i don't know flat packs uh, well, in, in this case here, you're not in the Flatpak ecosystem if you have like irrational hatred of flat packs for some reason, or if you're the app image developer, then maybe you want to use Snap. Uh, but yeah, um, the the main thing here is making sure that if you're on an NVIDIA or, or not NVIDIA, really? a Intel, <laughs> dangerous, that's, that's dangerous, dangerous, <laughs> trop dangereux, monsieur. Okay. Yeah, uh, but yeah, if if you're if you're on an AMD card, uh, you're running an Ubuntu, and you don't want to set up like a like the the PPA the OA buff or I don't, I don't know what it's called. Um, the, the bleeding edge, yeah, the bleeding edge Mesa PPA. This this will get you going, right? And if you're only playing your games on Steam, if you're not really using Lutris or any other things on your laptop that require the most bleeding edge graphics, then yeah, like getting it this way is uh, fairly convenient, I would imagine. And if you're wanting to play stuff with Proton Experimental, you do need Mesa 22 at least. So if, say, you're running an LTS, a very old LTS, that you don't... 1404? Or 1204? Or, well, even 1804 would be, because you're not getting uh, version 22 of Mesa on 1804. 1004? So, hmm? 804? 1004. 904 was not an LTS, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the um, yeah, it is. It makes sense if you're on an LTS to uh, like okay, let's just give them the uh, Mesa, the like bleeding edge Mesa for the stuff that'll actually need it, like games. I would add though, probably a newer version of glibc because uh, there were quite a few things that while I was still on uh, KDE Neon that I couldn't run, and that's like 2004. So yeah, that's. Probably also a consideration. I'm just going to be, if you're going to get to the point where you're doing like glibc to snap, something's went tragically wrong in your life. <laughs> I, I, That's the I, thing I, with snaps so, uh, is including the whole um, runtime dependencies. Tragically wrong. 
I so so my my life was ruined because of glibc issues in containers due to a work thing. So this is just giving me like all sorts of PTSD. PTSD. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. oh no, no more glibc. I swear I fixed it. Don't make me uh, do it again. Yeah, I run into like glibc problems and I go, well, that's just going to have to stay a problem now, isn't it? Uh, mm-hmm. So, Pedro, you get a Steam Deck. You're going to give do. us uh, all the hot dishing on this latest client update because it's it's kind of a big one. Yeah, uh, well, uh, the, compared to the actual like big beta Solid roundups, a little worse, I dare you. <laughs> like the big beta roundups are usually much much bigger. This one, comparatively speaking, smallish. So uh, yeah, it is for the stable client. Basically, what it does is it brings up the uh, increase in boot animation um, length from ten seconds up to thirty seconds, uh, and if you. Um, if you were having issues with uh, Steam input after they introduced the uh, stick flick anti-deflection issues, uh, if you were having issues with their implementation of that, that that sentence took a while to get off my brain, uh, the uh, new Steam input fixes actually resolve most of them. There were also I got, some... I gotta ask, because uh, you, you brought up the Steam intro video. Uh-huh. Uh, is that guy still stuck in watching the entirety of Shrek <laughs> before his Steam Deck I think it's up? been three hours. It's already been more than three hours. It's probably okay. okay. <laughs> have, have, they, have they included an escape hatch? Like, you know, if you did put the entirety of Batman Begins as your as your Steam Deck startup I mean, video. to be fair, the, they, are, they were already limiting it to 10 seconds, and now they've increased it to 30 seconds so that people can use the big fancy new ones that Valve officially supports. You can set mm. your... Um, your own boot animations and they're going to be having uh, on the Steam client I still itself. think that is genuinely one of the <laughs> dumbest things I've ever heard of. It's like, oh yes, you know what? Hey, let's, uh, let's make shit take longer. No. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, I, I mean, it's it's worth it for like all the, the Pornhub boot loop boot videos where it's just like... No, I I understand. Like, here's the thing. I mean, what I would want to do is like somehow spool up like a stripped down version of Chromium and go to TikTok if even if you can from a web and like do a search for ham or something like yeah, but it's it, it it seems very much targeted at those people that just want to show off their Steam Deck and they take it somewhere and they just show people, hey, hey look what it does when I turn it on. Hey, you want to watch the entirety of Shrek? <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be uh, the case, but yeah, it is a smallish update. If you if you were looking for it since the dock is now out and uh, you got one of them and you were having issues with external monitor support because some monitors with the way that it handles the resolution Steam Deck was having some issues actually putting um, an image on screen so you just get two black screens. Uh, the safe uh, option that it just renders what's on the uh, it just mirrors what's on the deck screen. See, the Intel, this monitor. is why I want my 770. <laughs> I want to have two black screens. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's still in the beta, so you're, uh, you're going to have to wait for that one a little bit. <laughs> okay, so Emu Deck is not what you think. No, no, no. <laughs> it's not the uh, backyard accessory filled with emus. Uh, not, not a manual. Not no, a manual no. at all. <laughs> but yeah, Emu Deck is like one of those things that you kind of want if you are into any emulation games at all you know those uh totally legally obtained digital copies of your console games i dumped that, them yeah I've, yes I've, uh, I've, that I've, is I've the actual copies yeah yeah that, that is actually the or one of the best implementations on the steam deck and they've made the installation so simple right now including the new update because they've updated to version 2 which uh basically uh, if you already have uh, emu deck installed you can um, just yeah, Pedro this says emu deck 2 so do i got to have a steam deck 2 to use it N- no oh. <laughs> it's you, just you, the version actually, <laughs> you you need a steam deck 4 so ah but yeah uh, if you already have it installed they put a little shortcut on uh the desktop if you're in desktop mode and you can just run that and it'll update it boom done and yeah it comes with three new emulators the uh, vita 3k for the two games that may be worth a damn that were exclusives to the vita like wipeout 2048 and soul sacrifice and uh scum vm and doom so scum VM's yeah. a little late. <laughs> Con- considering that like that's like the og open source gaming thing right 
Mm-hmm. Um, but they they added uh, cloud uh, storage features as well for uh, cloud saves, yes. and that's pretty interesting. Uh, someone what in the, the Twitter hell thread. Are these diseased. Oh, they're Android devices. Yeah, right. em, 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 uh, no, they're Embernix. Uh, Embernix. They're, they're running 600s. with those. They're, <laughs> they're yeah, running with those eleven, the bottom one. Yeah, yeah. The uh, <laughs> the cl- the cloud saves. They uh, piggyback over uh, OneDrive, Google Drive, own cloud, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You just set it up, and uh, you can keep your saves and your emulator settings synced across your devices, which is always pretty yep. nice. Um, I wish more software would like give you an option to synchronize your settings via via some cloud service or just mm-hmm. like a handy dandy export import feature. Hey. So good on good on Emo Deck. <laughs> Yeah, so, and they improved the GUI for just like the initial setup that you need to do. That looks much better now. So good job. Yeah, I, <laughs> one of the things I've been impressed about with the third-party development with the Steam Deck, everyone really seems to be like leaning into making it look nice. Yeah, yes. <laughs> which is because <laughs> it turns out a consumer device. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jordan, you know, you can, you, uh, we, uh, we can finally play. No, we can't. Never mind. I misread that. <laughs> no, you know what? Well, I, well, I, I can I can play Vermintide two by myself again on regular ass uh, Proton Experimental or uh, Proton regular anyways. Proton seven point dash five is out. It's got a bunch of new uh, games that you can play, uh, including Rift, Unravel, Airborne Kingdom. Nancy Drew followed in Indiana Jones's footsteps apparently Finally. with the Legend of the Crystal Skull. <laughs> Uh, Pedro's going to be real happy about Revolt. Vermintide 2. Um, you can get into game. Uh, joining games still will eat shit, but you can host and play single player. That part still still works. And we do need to point out, you to- have to do all of the EAC stuff manually set up. It doesn't do any of that for you. Yes. I think that was the same thing for uh, for like Fall Guys. And, uh, oh, it is. I just want to point out, anybody who's just going to install that after listening to the show, and like, none of this works. That's why. Yeah. Yeah, and install yes. the uh, Proton EAC runtime in order for that to work. Yes, you must do that. Uh, yeah, so um, Spider-Man Remastered has uh, some fixes fixes with uh, incorrectly reporting uh, old drivers. Final Fantasy fourteen Online works again. Uh, you can get in there with, well, there's no longer a free trial. But hey, it's uh, more more improvements. Uh, there's a new version, uh, bump to the latest version of DXVK as well. Yeah, it's just keep on keep on rocking on, making sure that game new stuff will work. And apparently, um, th- I, I think this is the one that they tested Uncharted with, because this is Proton Stable, right? They did push out an emergency update. I retweeted uh, Sandrew's uh, tweet about that yesterday. They did like a hot fix update to Proton to make sure Uncharted worked. Mm, so yeah, they, yeah. they were on top of it. And I'm like, boom, there it is. So yeah, this mm. one is still the release candidate for the 7.0-5. But it is a revolt, to Jordan's point. I already finished revolt on the deck while I was in Portugal because um, I was using our VGL with Lux Torpeda. It's just so much nicer. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, that didn't impact me. But uh, I was kind of hoping that this would have hit stable before what I wrote in the notes and today. <laughs> But it didn't. It's still in RC. So uh, if you want to go poke at it on, you know, late Sunday night when the produced version's available, probably oh, you, already you, too you, late. You know, the second like we end this segment, they're gonna push yeah. this out. It's like, oh yeah, it's stable now. <laughs> Take it, taking a page out of uh, Eggy's book there. Yeah. Jackbox. So, Jackbox, got, Jackbox has learned to count to um, what nine. is that in, uh, in Spanish? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, nueve, ocho. Nueve? Nueve? No, ocho. Wait, that's eight. That's eight. Ocho is eight. Eight. God damn it. Nueve. Nueve. We'll never know. (laughs) It's been lost to time. (laughs) That's French. (laughs) What we're talking about is one-armed teddy bears and hedgehogs, baby. Uh, Small items for small... uh, Like I said, I asked there for a minute. Uh, Jackbox Party Pack 9 is out. We bought it. We're going to be playing it in the after show. It's currently twenty six ninety nine, regularly twenty nine ninety nine, and uh, it runs on Debian testing with an NVIDIA card. I tested it. What do we got this go around? We got Fibbage Four. Jordan is like that's like the safety game because we know that one's kind of fun, right? Yeah, uh, they got they got quick sort where uh, the team has to like sort stuff based on trivia sorting factory. Yeah, yeah Junktopia, which is like Pawn Stars. 
but for like coming up with fake <laughs> item explanations. Frog. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like, like like I said, so uh, Junktopia looks like it could be a fun chaotic do non sensory. I, I don't I don't know what that is. Rumoring also seems fun as well. Um, but I guess, I guess yeah, we're going to try it out. This is yeah. what we typically do. Let's see. What do we need to run it? Oh, and by the way, it defaults to a 720p window still because they like to make you squint. Um, Compatibility. 2.3 quad core. Yeah, you can pretty much run this on a slightly overclocked potato. Shouldn't be too much of an issue. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing around with it. I'm, it's like 20 bucks. You can usually always get, you know, you can extract your $20 yeah. worth of fun out of a Jackbox game for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's going to be good. Pedro is uh, a resident person who hates fun the most. Uh, what do you think about the, uh, uh <laughs> I, I'm usually I know, the one that I votes know, for I saw Jackbox. That, I saw that look, Pedro, you were disturbed <laughs> thinking I could read your mind. <laughs> I'm yeah, usually yeah, the yeah, one yeah, who yeah, suggests yeah, Jackbox yeah, for yeah. the after show games. What? <laughs> I'm very happy. There's more. I want more fibbage. It sounds really nice. Actually. <laughs> Who is the best liar in Linux Gamecast? Kitty cats we'll on out. brooms. <laughs> yeah, flying <laughs> Neko delivery. Uh, did you want to play Star Fox, but you thought, no, nope. nah, it's yeah, not cute enough. Yeah, I did, and I that game, and it rarely gets updated. Yeah, well, uh, still play, early access. flying Neko delivery <laughs> might scratch that itch for you. It is a flight sim slash town builder slash chill delivery game. Uh, you play as a cat on a broom. You fly around. You make deliveries. You buy stuff. You customize your house. I don't know, like, it, it really much strikes me as Kiki's Delivery Service, the game. And I was thinking about that, like, people really like Kiki's Delivery Service as a movie. I'm surprised that there aren't, like, more games trying to ape it. Oh, but man. I guess I guess Flight Sim Stardew Valley might be considered a little niche. This, I don't know. This is Pilot Wings with a fursuit. Um, yeah. Foraging? Yeah. That's <laughs> it. it's, 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 it's like that uh, farming game we played, um, but with Kiki's Delivery Service. I see. I don't know what Kiki's delivery service is. He keeps saying that. Like, it's, it's 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 a famous movie. It's about a little witch girl who runs a delivery service. Anime, yeah, type of situation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, stu Studio Ghibli. Hi, I'm Nineteen ninety nine. It's so, a it's a little pricey. Yeah. Does a it multiplayer bit. or anything? No, no, it no, is no. Just That's single a single player only experience. Yeah. No, it, this is very much for the people who want um, a Euro Truck Simulator, but with a flying kitty cat. On a broomstick. <laughs> yeah, you know, with, that, with, that with some, with some uh, can't even see each other with high powered binoculars, man. <laughs> with, 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 some, no, with some harvest the, moon. The Venn diagram uh, is seven. literally just a pixel. <laughs> Patch 1.0 uh, is the one game update, and everything I know about this update, I talked about in the pre show because I watched um, Con Carnage? Co Carnage, yeah. Co Carnage. And uh, he, he, Con Carne, yes. Con Carne. <laughs> He was going to stream a little bit of it, and I it was before we did a uh, Linux and Laps last night. But then I'm like, oh yeah, Pedro played the game, and I'm, let me take a look at this. And he spent like the first 15 minutes like screaming at it, going, "What the hell's wrong with this thing? I can't reset it to play a new game." And I he had to like un disconnect from the internet and do all this weird stuff. <laughs> Basically, delete all the local files and uh, play it all <laughs> so that you can start with a blank because the game. Uh, in early access, it only did the Steam um, Vampire uh, Survivor. <laughs> yes, the Steam Cloud uh, saves. Now, once you launch Vampire Survivors version 1.0, uh, first thing you see is instead of just loading, you see synchronizing save files. Like, oh, that's new. But yes, uh, you if you look at the store page for Vampire Survivors, you'll just go. There's no Linux icon on that. Well. There is a Linux version. It's still stuck in the beta branch, and you want uh, to use it if you are playing it on the deck, because it uses a considerable amount less resources, specifically like CPU Pedro, power. None of this matters. It's got Twitch mode. <laughs> it does. <laughs> can, can you do, can you do, do Twitch do? plays Vampire Survivors? Right? This is what I, I need. To I don't know what it does, but you can put your Twitch channel uh, into the corner See, there. This, this is because <laughs> I, I understand how the game works, and I'm like, how? What do you, what, what do you, maybe chat can influence and throw specific enemies at the screen, which is very likely. Uh, but yeah, it is, uh, if you've been playing it, you already know, uh, what it is. The fully released version comes with the, um, 
new achievements and all of the achievements in order uh, once you get them they actually unlock stuff in game so good job on them for that uh and they reworked a few of the existing ones like the ones that required you to go up to level 100 or level 99 now they have like lower level requirements so that you can get those achievements a little bit easier there's new skins for characters uh there's two different play modes and there's a new map which is where they introduced a bunch of the current stuff. So you're you're going to go, be going back to that a lot. So yeah, uh, if you've already unlocked all of the achievements prior to this, you get like three achievements for free. You just launch the game and you get those three. So that's nice. <laughs> so is it worth installing it? I mean, it's a pretty big download, right? Uh, no, no, it's 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 not that big. It's like a couple of hundred megabytes. <laughs> Still, I'm still, a still, hundred megs. still not gonna it do it, Pedro. Still not gonna do framework it. Framework game. Oh, <laughs> you, you can't. You can't make me do it. I'm not. I'm not gonna install Vampire Survivors again. Uh, uh, what if I it? put it on the show no, notes as the game we're throwing chairs at next week? <laughs> then he he doth protest because it's a beta. <laughs> yeah. That's because the thought did cross my mind because we have the game. <laughs> It's like, oh, I had to go to the hospital. I drove my car off a cliff. Oh, yeah. oh no. Can't, can't play Vampire like, Survivors. What do you mean? You don't have, it's like, I, I'll go buy one. Shut up. <laughs> uh, I think it, as a game, it's completely inoffensive. It, it doesn't yeah, it, have... Uh, it, it's, it's an idle game, clicker with extra steps. Every every time someone mentions Vampire Survivors, my desire to play it <laughs> further reduces to like the limit approaching <laughs> negative infinity. Coming up next... Man, isn't it great to just like have functioning drivers for your Intel card? Really easy to install. You're so real funny. easy to get up yeah, and running. Yeah, yeah. go, you're go good. play interrupting. It is LGC tradition. Uh, I mean, 500 and somewhat uh, episodes in, uh, we probably started to the get majority. <laughs> Well, that licorice, too. Licorice, <laughs> licorice. If you're, if you're not watching us live, that probably didn't make a lot of sense. But Do you, you should think totally you could watch get us like live. hallucinogenic licorice. Uh, yeah, probably. I, I oh man, no, you, you can, 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 you, out can of I him. get like can I get like <laughs> LSD licorice? Can I can I get LSD except the L stands for licorice? <laughs> If, if, Probably. If, if you, if no, you want to, Walter. No, Walter. <laughs> meow, meow, Walter. Pet me, Walter. <laughs> well, if, if you if you want if you want to treat us like kitty cats and give us pets, head on over to <laughs> patreoncom slash gamecast and stroke us with your hard earned cash. Become a Patreon, and you can get some cool stuff like access to our Discord channel, which you can also get by subbing to us on Twitch, twitchtv slash gamecast Speaking of. Twitch subs, we gotta thank uh, Game Motron for being a 13 Motron resub. 13 so, Motron. Yeah, Dude. 13 Motron. <laughs> I really like how Twitch throws us. Uh, apparently, we can do something if it takes too long for the Twitch thing to sync. Yeah. All I right. was reading about that, and, there, and Twitch is like, yo, you know, it works. It should be instantaneous, or it'll be in a cron once a week. But if you're impatient, just bug the um, Discord runner to make them manually resync. I'm like, thanks, Twitch. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, get, get fucked. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, access to our uh, Discord channel. It's good stuff. We're there most of the time talking shit, talking about uh, licorice or getting hammered off of Halloween and candy because, you know, they're sticking all the drugs in the Halloween candy this year. Uh, you can get access to the show notes. Uh, you can buy your way into the show because, you know, uh, we, we, we have the ability to host the fourth person here. Very rarely do people take us up on it, but we can do it. We also get game streams. Uh, ben is doing Trackmania on Tuesdays and Fridays. I got to figure out something else to do on Thursdays because we're through back for blood. I, so, uh, yeah, if you want to join in, you can RSVP via our discord. Uh, what else? Uh, we got a store, store.onexgamecast.com. Cover yourself in our LGC merch. We got t-shirts we got stickers we got coffee cups if you want to wear a coffee cup i don't know how you would do it but you know send us some photos and we will we will i'm just saying here's what you need to do you need to anger and confuse the children in the neighborhood you got you there's still time um rush delivery Mm -hmm. and hand out coffee cups yeah (laughs) and hand out hell elks coffee cups and hell elk stickers yes Mm -hmm. but bonus soda fill them fill fill them full of mayonnaise and then hand them out it might be a little expensive (laughs) but it's worth it you can get mayonnaise on sale pretty easily we got a couple of little things for the amazon wish list because i'm already creeping on i believe this is jordan's because i saw this and i said uh bells of steel (laughs) <laughs> also steal. A, a, a good Canadian company. I've bought some stuff from them before. What they, is it? They, what does it do? It's, it's a, a it's, a, it's a dip belt. So like, if you dip want to belt. do weighted pulps, like right. uh, you can 
just tie some weights to it. Jordan's got a very interesting one filled with PC and weightlifting stuff and these green things that I look at each and every week. Pedro is into drives, drills, and heat guns and criminal activity stuff like um, <laughs> files. It's and, just a motorized uh, screwdriver. That's it. Uh, the, you, you, you're going to yes, drive Pedro. away from the crimes on the motorized scooter. Yeah. Tell me more about your motorized 16-piece file set. With <laughs> those are not motorized those are just files <laughs> i got one for the studio with like plugs and chips and crap on it but we do appreciate your support and uh thanks for letting us uh do this how we do it it's kind of fun mm-hmm. it's kind of interesting we don't have any rules wait do we have any rules we we we, uh, we got a couple no, but most of them involve scrolling up yeah. <laughs> yeah don't yeah, scroll just, up just, don't scroll up Re- yeah. reading is for squares do you know that's if a you're sending us discord mail. Did you ever, uh, there's a server setting to where it can blink everything from the last time you were logged in. Oof. Like you don't even get the option. Uh, that, like, that, no history. The, yeah. Ooh. yeah. Uh, no, 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 no context. <laughs> context is for suckers. Uh, what, what else we got? We got the, we got the wish zones. We got the store. We got the Patreon. I guess that's, that's it. it. Yeah. We got, um, you got anything coming down the pipe for the Patreons? Any interface? Got a Linux couple stuff? things I'm working on. I'm going to be working on that Linux camera hack, which is going to be an incredibly good deal for people looking for a, uh, to turn a DSLR into a webcam because like last time I did that I made a video I was like oh this would be cute to do that video's got like 30,000 views on it now does it require an additional fan to be pointed at the no, camera this time no, around no, no, no. this is this is far less than engineering no rubber bands uh, no 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 uh, no engineering metal straw mouth for a lot of people this will be the first time that you've ever hacked firmware before and it's a really simple hack but it's really fun turns out these cameras are on android so okay. like, that was your first mistake. Uh, <laughs> it'll be kind of fun. And it's like, just stay tuned for that. And I got a couple other things down the pipe that I'm working on. Um, I'll uh, let you know about it when I get everything like lined up. But I really want to talk about something that I was disappointed with. And that's Intel Arc. Not Intel Arc by itself, but the availability of Intel Arc and my long running, um, very provable suspicion that they made six of those. 770 16 gig cards. Enough to see to YouTube reviewers. And they gave Intel uh, Newegg four, really three, because the other two were weights and um, hmm. air conditioners. <laughs> Maybe some air conditioners. But out of the box, you could run the Intel Arc series using the Mesa stack, open source driver stack, and that's all good. And that's all well. That's great. You want to play games? Boom. Pop it in and go. Oh, yeah, it, it doesn't play it. <laughs> it, it, it early, early days, yeah. It I, technically plays. Mm-hmm. But if you <laughs> wanted to do anything, um, what I was interested in, uh, the compute side with uh, video encoding, streaming, maybe you want to use Blender or something like that, you're going to need the super evil, big, bad, proprietary closed source drivers, just like AMD and NVIDIA. Sorry, nobody gets a free pass on that. Now, I, there was some speculation, myself included, like maybe Intel's going to be able to open that stack up too, and it, you won't have any binary. Glue. And then I was like, get the fuck out of here with that. <laughs> well, I, I mean, may, may, maybe before they lost half of their driver team, mm. uh, but now now that they had to like crunch to get that fixed, yeah, we're, we're getting whatever they can produce. Gentlemen, the if you want to access that open seal goodness inside the Intel Arc, you got to pay the price. And that price... Is installing in Ubuntu. Ubuntu That's Premium right. or just Ubuntu? Uh, regular, regular <laughs> for now. Twenty two oh four is what you're going to need, and a uh, couple of like Hans in here, couple mm-hmm. of Hans in here, up to and including. Now we're just looking at the uh, Intel's main page. All this is going to be linked in the description because there's an installation guide. It's a PPA pre-installing. You know this doesn't look too bad, right? Right. You set up the package repository. Uh, the first ha huh I had was note currently DKMS package only supports Ubuntu five seventeen OEM girdle. That's it. That's it. Oof. One That's kernel. the one that comes with um, twenty two oh four. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. You know. You know. For for DKMS, you know the thing that allows you to support multiple kernels and future kernels only uh-huh. works on 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 the one. That's yeah. Yeah, that, that's something. Even the like, NVIDIA drivers have issues with that sometimes, to be fair. <laughs> I'm I'm less angry than I am impressed of like, was that a practical joke until that just got out of hand and somebody wanted to run with it? Because yes, you're 100% right. That is the de- thing that lets you automatically build for other, ker- that only works with one kernel. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Runtime yeah. packages, pretty straightforward uh, developer packages. Yeah, we're just looking at that. Configuration doesn't look too bad. How many steps total? Um six all right 
Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I read through this. I'm like, re- really, Intel? You're just going to do us dirty like that? <laughs> like, I guarantee all of those server lo- workloads that you're after, they're, they're, they're not running Ubuntu, my friends. They are running other other Linuxes out there. Um, yeah, I, I mean, like, I guess, I guess, yeah, if you're using the uh, i915 drivers, you should be good, at least for the gaming stuff. But, you know, they were... They were um, this, this also covers the encoder stuff as well, which is really what they were promoting the hell out of. That was like yeah. the big buy this thing for, for Intel Arc is like, hey, check out our fucking crazy new encoder. They're great. Um, but I guess only if you're in Ubuntu land. Well, yeah. I mean, I can on, install on uh, Steam with Snap and OBS with Snap and probably none of this is going to work with it, but. Yeah, mm. <laughs> because it uses whatever is packaged in the runtime. But <laughs> yeah, the... Um, proprietary Intel drivers. It's not the first time that they've done this. If you ever tried to get quick sync set up on Linux, that's proprietary as shit. And there's some hoops you gotta jump to get those working. Does and it work AMD, on Kernel 5.16 though? Uh, yeah. It's, it's been working on Linux for a while now. Um, mm. The When uh, Tuxedo sent me the Infinity 13, uh, it took me a while to actually get QuickSync working on Solus, since I did the comparison between Tuxedo OS and Solus. Uh, so yeah, that takes some doing. The, uh, the way that AMD does it, there's now the uh, Radeon open source um, compute module, or Rockham, the Rockham drivers. You, those are open source. But most people, if you're doing any kind of OpenCL, stuff or any other compute stuff you're gonna want the proprietary modules because they they're much better but if you want to play games you don't want them so it remains to be seen how that looks like with intel because yeah the the cards did they, they they don't exist uh all i'm gonna say for this is like i kind of glad i neo dodged the bullet on that because i would be cross right now if I could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you would you would be very very angrily running a bunch of 2204 at the moment no let's be honest what i'd be doing is trying to like shoehorn that ppa in or at least getting a hold of the dabs <laughs> just and, like, download all the dabs yeah. and yeah. install them it's like yeah. okay yeah. i need that <laughs> or decompile you know on archive yeah. the dabs and see if i yeah. can figure out where they need Fo- to go foxy foxy raised a good point and was like yeah I, I wonder what happens if someone like runs this through alien and produces an rpm i want oh, to no. just- Oh, I wonder no. how that would fucking catch fire. <laughs> and see, I do have some experience with like, uh, especially on the video end of like Black Magic, Magewell, and stuff like that, with proprietary drivers that you're going to get for like production systems on Linux, and they're always, always you're going to have RHEL, whatever the latest RHEL is. They're going to be mm-hmm. tested against that. Those drivers are going to be included. Usually, you're going to get a Debian package as well. Then you might get a Tar. Jesus and say, "Have that fucko." Go, <laughs> go, yeah, go, go compile this here. Right. Yeah. Pretty much. And uh, this, like, I'm not, I'm not going to tangle with these. Like, NVIDIA's got it right. I, we've talked about installing NVIDIA drivers, which, if you know what you're doing, straightforward. This makes uh, r- the run file from NVIDIA look like wizard wizardry, man. Like, <laughs> can we get something like that, Intel? I know it's, like, early days to have functional drivers, but... Just, you know, don't make us drop into a TTY and stop the currently running graphics. Here's, here's the equivalence I need to drop on everybody, because I know <laughs> we got people listening, and you're on Windows, and you're like, ah, oh, nerds, what if Intel, you, you bought this, and you got it set up, and it said, you know what, you need to install Windows 8, or they don't work. You got to upgrade to Windows 11. <laughs> no, not in my case. I'd have to downgrade. <laughs> I'm running testing, baby. So, yeah, downgrade from, like, if you're on 11, it's like, only works with Windows 10. Like this is this is the same equivalent of this. All Linux is not great. <laughs> distributions are different. The kernel's the same, and well, it better be five fifteen exactly the same. That particular LTS or it's not going to be. You know. Yeah, five five seventeen. Yeah. Whatever. That's well. They may say that that's the only one supported because that's the only one they tested. That's the only one that they can verify that it's supported. Oh, poor poor Intel can Dude. only test one kernel. They're so they man, have no I'm resources, tired no of money. You yeah, that would require their them ass, to give man. a they shit. Are a, a scrappy <laughs> upstart. They don't have the time and they resources they, to. They only have billions of dollars. They don't have trillions. I think man. the point what here you... is them giving a shit, <laughs> which they don't seem to. Uh, I you know mean, what? look at that page. <laughs> they tried. They tried. So, uh, Vulcan extensions in Venus. Yes. From the Vol- fine, fine folks at Collabora, which are actually doing some very interesting stuff with Mesa, and they got a lot of Valve money uh, back in the day to make Mesa basically workable 
it the current state Google that it's money. in. And Google Money, yes. Uh, so now they have uh, Vulcan extensions in Venus. And you're wondering, what the hell's a Venus? Well, no, Venus No, no, I'm stopping and saying, these are my people. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. That's XFCE, baby. So you yeah. know they're legit. The uh, virtualized client is running XFC. Uh, and yeah, Venus, basically what it does is it allows some GPU um, functionality to be passed on to the virtualized guest uh, to have the actual physical graphics card uh, on your host system just accelerate the stuff in the guest without having to do the FIO or G- full-on GPU pass-through. Uh, and what the big news here is uh, they've added um, Vulkan because you used to have Virgil, uh, the Virgil renderer, which handled that but for OpenGL. V... IRGL virtual Vir- uh, clever virtual virtual GL <laughs> yep yeah uh it is um uh, and now uh the new bits basically introduce all the necessary stuff to pass Vulcan to the client so that it can be um accelerated without passing the whole GPU which is yeah really nice <laughs> yeah but let, it lets you have like a uh, like a fake GPU mounted on your uh on your virtual machine which is something that stuff like virtual box has had for a good long while and mm-hmm. it's been one of the it's kind of been one of the pain points for like QEMU KVM is there hasn't been really a good way to uh handle that level, that sort of GPU virtualization now that now that actually exists but I mean could I just uh, get, like put a second 4090 in the case I mean, you'd need like two kickstands, and uh, I think and, need, I, and I think um, it might like collapse into a black hole given the mass of like all the computer hardware. What if but, I just got like a PCI Express extender and like laid it on the floor? <laughs> I, I mean, your your Roomba might trip it over, trip over it. But, I think the biggest issue is going to be the Nvidia drivers not letting you do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, the, and and the, so this this is all done through Mesa, so I don't know how well this will actually play through the uh, through the Nvidia drivers. Definitely, if you're on Intel or AMD, this is going to work. And yeah, having Vulkan acceleration in vGPUs opens up a lot of really cool possibilities for preservation oh, yeah. in the long run. Because like you know, this x86 shit, it's not going to exist forever. This Vulkan stuff is not going to be supported forever. But hey, having uh, a virtual machine that you can spin up and just run this uh, natively uh, is going to be pretty cool. The performance is shit right now. The uh, the video they showed you for dota 2 is running at something like 15 frames a second and but they also they did point just, out they're like we use gnome screen yeah. capture for this which is the wrong way of doing it yeah but, but like they just got this working too so yeah. like it's only going to get better over time so like do you think in the future everybody's going to want to suck a little bit of that venus right yeah well yeah. Little, little, if you're little demilo doing any kind of and i can see vmware probably being very very happy about this because they're just going to go oh that's open source is it there you go <laughs> oh, yeah, no, yeah, well no they're, they're 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 going to scoop it in and then not include the license for it and be like no this is ours yes. we developed this well, it's just like our SCSI driver <laughs> dude it, it's better than like oracle it just like looks at you and steps on a puppy and does nothing I mean. oh yeah it just <laughs> stares at you and just like executes the child be mm-hmm. like why download <laughs> open box we dare you to run it inside your company Oh boy! Yeah. Oh. oh yeah, JavaScript games. I've always followed this, like for a long time. I've always been like crazy impressed. He, even back in the Amiga days when people were doing demos, like <laughs> yeah. seeing what you could come up with and pushing things. Constraints really push creativity more often than not. They, they really, they really do. Yeah, necessity is the mother of invention, one hundred percent. And these are the results from the JS thirteen K game jam. What that is, is how much of a game can you cram into uh, 13 kilobytes of JavaScript? And the winners are what the best folks were able to manage. So I played, I went through a couple of these, like some of them are 3D and that's like just incredibly Mm -hmm. impressive. Like Dante, Uh, that's crazy. Uh, but I played Tin Death, and that was pretty funny. It's like Papers, Please, but like you're, it's Tinder, but for who gets to go to heaven and hell, which was kind of funny. And uh, Racing Fighting Spirits was okay. It's like a Slay the Spire clone, but like, again, it's under 13K of JavaScript. You can play these all in the browser. Just click and go. They all run pretty well. And yeah, it's, it's just good to see. Always good to see people coming out with like new, not, e- not even big games, but just new games, trying to, trying to make new things because... You know, we, we need more of that. This, okay, this is yes. the, yeah. <laughs> How do I play? Karen Jr. <laughs> is, is that the Always Sunny font? Do the thing. And I gave up. The, oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. It is. 
Look at look at go. Know 3D in JavaScript. Can I run people over? <laughs> yeah. No, they're, you're they're already dead. You're just supposed to take their souls. It's like crazy yeah. taxi. Yes. Oh. <laughs> 13k though. Like, come on. Yes. That's right. Like 13k of JavaScript and oh, look, there's a rip rap. Oh, we no. well, you miss. <laughs> missed it by it. that much. <laughs> I'm in the green goo. Take two. <laughs> yeah, but like, yes, yeah, so, so, some of these are pretty fun, and you know, they're browser games, so it's not really a big investment to give them a whirl. So I highly suggest you follow the links in our show notes and try a couple of these out because people work hard on them. Collision. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> be, 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 be impressed about how tiny these games are and how like remarkably full featured they are. <laughs> which 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 is crazy compared to like I don't know a game we're gonna be throwing chairs at in a little bit. Mm. It, it's one of, yeah. I mean, if you need something that'll really knock you down a peg and make you feel slightly less inferior, more inferior, you're like yeah, yeah, yeah. Give us a look. This stuff is awesome. Now, Speed Dreams. We I just like to bring it up. This game has been around on Linux since I can remember. It's never my gem, but yeah, you know, simulators <laughs> gonna simulate. It is, and uh, if you ever looked at Speed Dreams and went, that looks a lot like Torx. Well, uh, they used to be just effectively a fork of Torx, but now they're uh, very much... Of torx? Yes, uh, the forks of Torx? Yes, the forks of Torx. torx. It's like uh, the Knights of very Rin, much but they have sports. doing their own thing and actually focusing on the simulation and the physics and the accuracy of it all to the point that some of the release notes for version 230 uh, beta 1 they include like uh, the way that the engine look in certain cars has been improved oh finally uh, the the way that the engine sounds play depend on the different kinds of cars has been changed it's uh, you can set the initial fuel level uh, for a car when you first start to play the game. It's like, uh, that? Okay. I like racing games. I do. <laughs> but the more towards the sim side they get, the less I like them. <laughs> and uh, Speed Dreams, unfortunately, is very much right on the cusp there of going, yeah, that's a sim. I, n no. Yeah, mo mo most of the, most of the um, most of the patch notes here are like very simulator specific. Like, oh yes, we've changed all of these little details that no one cares about unless that is the car that you drive in this game. But hey, a couple things they did add: resizable window support, so you can you know resize this game and not play it in the thumbstamp. And uh, they updated to the latest version of SDL two, which you know always great, better controller support. Yep. You're gonna get those steering wheels working so that you can enjoy your. F1 I think it's a wonderful sim. thing, man. I always imagine like Speed Dreams is you know in that sim level of like you have your own rig set up for these types of things yeah right? yeah. yeah it's very much that kind of person uh game <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's still competitive uh speed dreams players on a, a controller yeah and, and they are way better than you will ever be <laughs> yeah. they will yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was um, checking out uh, the YouTubes as one does you know trying to find the sweet embrace of sleep yet being denied again and YouTube was like, hey, you ever like punch out? And I'm like, yeah, punch out. In, in the Doom engine? What the fuck are you talking about, man? Yeah. And I had that video, and <laughs> lo and behold, Jordan, lo and behold. Yeah, yeah it, it, is, it is what it says on the Tim. Pun, punch out, done in Doom 2. Um, yeah, if, if you wanted to beat up Glass Joe and Mike Tyson, uh, but you wanted to do it as Doom Guy, you absolutely, in first person, you absolutely can right now. Um, this is a pretty old project actually, and they have, uh, they've been putting out releases basically once a year. They had one that was released, um, in, uh, June, I think of this year, uh, that added, uh, Zed Doom support. So if you're on, uh, GZ Doom, uh, you can suck it. And if you're on BZ Doom or XZ Doom, then... Go go back to the future and, and like, or go back in time and invent those things because I'm pretty sure they don't exist. Do you get the shotgun? No. Can, oh man, can, can you get like the glory kills like in like 2016 Doom and just like fucking rip out Mike Tyson's heart and like feed it to him? Yeah, I'd be know. so down with this. Uh, I just wanted to throw this in because I saw that and I'm like, is that a real? Did, you know, I thought you know somebody like made it, hacked it up in Unity to look like that. I'm like, holy shit, that's a real project. And yeah, you can just go. Have some fun with it. And it was neat. I like to share neat stuff, especially when, you know, everybody makes a shooter out of the shooter engine, like strangely, who would have thought? Mm -hmm. And when I see something, you know, it's a puncher, which she's doing something a little different, a little weird. Uh, yeah. It, it's like that Sonic racing game that's also done in Doom, right? Like, but right? why? Mm -hmm. Hey, and, and it turned out to be a fun game. This could very well be fun. I didn't get a chance to play with it. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and chances are most everyone has GZ Doom installed, so yeah, give it a try. 
No, <laughs> Zed Doom. No, no G, no G Zed Doom. Uh, no G Zed Doom. Okay. No, no, just Zed Doom. <laughs> um, Doom. It's probably yeah, that, a repost. Guy, guy, guy was really clear about that in the notes. Uh, all right. Well, coming up next, Brick Tales. Woohoo! Scientifically accurate Brick Tales. Hmm. Welcome back to the Chairquisition, where we take a game, run it on three different Linuxes, on three fairly different hardware setups, and then give you a highly scientific, um, I, I, I guess, br- bricky, ver- ver- child safe, you can't choke on it, score, Challenge based on accepted. launchers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one, one chair means that it's garbage, four chairs means that it's fucking amazeballs. This week we're taking a look at Lego Brick Tales. Developed by Clockstone Studios on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about 30 bucks US. What is it? In this puzzle adventure, use an intuitive brick by brick building mechanic to solve puzzles and bring your creations to life. Experience a charming story as you explore beautiful Lego dioramas and help the people inhabiting them. Gotta thank Thunderful Publishing, the publisher of this game, for sending us some keys for it over Curator Connect. So let's get into it. Pedro, were you able to swallow the Lego bricks? Uh, I didn't actually try to put them in my mouth. I guess I grew out of it at some point. But, uh, you know, no king shaming. Uh, over here on the uh, Ryzen 7 3700X and the Radeon RX 6700 XT on Nobara, it launches out of the box. And on the deck, it also launches out of the box. Again, Steam Deck verified, so it better. It does some interesting shenanigans with the frame rate. If you leave the controller idle for a few seconds in game or like five seconds in the menu, the FERPs get locked to 30. It actually does a good job because it immediately unlocks as soon as you touch any of the controls. So that's that's some visible Steam Deck optimization going on there in a Lego game. Uh, clearly the Steam Deck is making the uh, mainstream rounds, so that's good. Uh, the music loop... Uh, Actually, there's no rebindable control, so that just gets you minus one chair right right off the bat. The music loop is fairly short, but it is basically elevator music, so it's inoffensive. Uh, the graphics look good, even if you're not able to spin the camera outside of the construction mode or uh, if you're in the pause menu. So that's a bit shit. Uh, and uh, some of the controller item uh, icon prompts are a little small for the screen on the deck. The bumper slash trigger icons are basically impossible to figure out from the text what they are, so you just have to try both and see which one it is. As for the fun, uh, as it turns out, yeah, it is kind of fun. The music may be uninspired and the controls and the camera limitations are very much unwelcome, but as a puzzle game, it's pretty good. Um, maybe a little on the brain meets at least for the uh, the start of the game there's a couple of more involved ones once you've unlocked the first area and go back to the uh derelict amusement park where your grandpa uh is um trying to basically conduct his experiments underground <laughs> but there is no one correct solution uh, for any of the puzzles past the tutorial and the more complex they get the more different er- Uh, ways you have of solving the puzzles. The solution can be as practical or as visually appealing as you wish it to be. And some of the puzzles, you actually have the option to go back and change them entirely with uh, access to all the pieces that you've unlocked uh, and make it look as pretty as you want. And, you know, like all good puzzle games do, and the one that's on screen right now is a very good example, uh, you get everything, all the pieces you need, all the pieces that you you will require to solve the puzzle are on screen the whole time. You just have to wiggle the camera around to get the piece in the exact right place, but uh, Ven and Jordan will get to that in more detail. Uh, It's good, and much like last week, if you have a proto-human asking for a Steam Deck of their own and games to play on it, I like a Brick Tales is very much a must. Three chairs. (laughs) Jordan, did did we decide who's going next? Uh, it, was, it was me. I'm just looking at Pedro building this thing. Like, this is way more complicated than my staircase by by a mile. <laughs> All right. Any, anyways, uh, this is why you got to watch the video version uh, if you're an audio listener. On Fedora 35, 64-bit with the R9 3900X, GTX 1080 Ti, launches out of the box, holds 80 plus frames a second at UHD. Um... Yeah, behold these Legoland graphics where all the voxels have little many Lego logos on them. I mean, graphically, it's okay. There's nothing. There's nothing like out of place. Everything is very clearly built out of Lego. 
meets the aesthetic. Um, controller worked out of the box, but oh boy, that those building controls were awful. I had, I had my, my partner, Lonnie, she was watching me and she's like, wow, this is like the worst part of Lego meets the worst part of video games. And I got to say, that's pretty on point. Um, there is definitely a soundtrack, but it stays out of the way for the most part. It's fun wise. So like here, here's here's the deal. If you're going to be building, making a game about building Legos, you gotta at least make the Lego building good. And my God, does this get frustrating when it comes to placing bricks? There is like a multi-part tutorial that teaches you about rotating and layering and whatever, and it works in the tutorial. But once you get onto the real world, whatever fucking aim assist this game has is like trying to actively sabotage me and my bricklaying to the point where I'm pretty sure it just hates my guts. It is unpleasant. And when you have games that have been out longer, like Besiege, that have that like have construction, like th this game has an adventure component. I'll get to that in a little bit. But pure construction games have like like Besiege, Bridge Constructor, Portal, that kind of stuff do it way better than this game and Lego's kind of the OG. Uh, it's, and this is the meat of the game and it's very, very unpleasant to play. There's some mild exploration, but like once you get like the power jump where like you can use your jetpack to burn down plants sometimes, but not all the plants. Uh, and you, you get a whip that sometimes you can use to climb up things. I don't know. Like I've played other Lego games before, like the Lego star Wars games where like traversal is fun and this game doesn't have it. It pales in comparison, especially when you get like fixed camera for the overworld segments, except in the pause menu where you can rotate it to find secrets because there are, there are secrets. I, I, I don't know. The puzzles themselves are okay, like Pedro alluded to. There's often... Um, oh, th this this one is fucking... Oh, that was fun. Um... There, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, openness into in terms of like it, it's a physics based puzzler. So as long as your solution is physics sound from a physics perspective, it should be fine. And like the weights that you have to support aren't super heavy or anything, so it works well enough in that regard, I suppose. But again, the core meat of the game just isn't there. The building feels so awful. And like, if you're a Lego game and you can't do that well, uh, the best I can really give you is, is two chairs. It's not a complete shit show, but oh boy. Over here in Debian land, let's take a look at it. That is frighteningly early, but also frighteningly accurate. You know what? It's open GL. And it's able to rock 130 FPS at 2160p, if you nope that V-Sync, and that's on an NVIDIA 3060, powered by an AMD 1920X. And as Jordan said, no camera control in the overworld. But you can do the camera control in the building mode, because reasons, I don't know, I found that a little bit confusing. And I started this off with a controller. Just, just curious, I'm like, is a building game with a controller? This is going to be silly. And it was. It was right up to the point where I said, fine, I'm going to use keyboard and mouse like a normal person. Maybe <laughs> five minutes of that. It's like, where's the controller? Because somehow that's worse. The controller's more logical than the keyboard and mouse. And as Pedro said, you can't rebind anything. So you're kind of stuck with it. Now, I got to say, that's the first time I've ever gone back to a controller. Because normally, out of curiosity, you might try something like a first person shooter, your Halos and Left 4 Deads and stuff like that with the controller. Like, oh, that's cute. Can't do it. Uh, you rarely go back. I did. Soundtrack is there if you kind of lean into it and listen. You're like, yeah, there's some music playing in the background. Nothing you're going to write home about. Let's talk about the fun, though, because the problem with any Lego building game, children, is that you have to come up with rules for the game. And everyone over the age of three knows there's fucking no rules when it comes to Lego. Those don't exist. And, you know, I meet, yes, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is I immediately found myself arguing with what the game would, would not allow me to get away with. It's like, bullshit, bullshit, I can make that work, I can make that work. The problem with that is it doesn't leave a lot of room for creativity. You know? It just doesn't. Um, it's all block goes here, citizen. You're like, fine, okay. Kind of feel like you're working a little bit. Now, you build a lot of bridges in that first hour, don't you? Hmm, you kind of get good at it. First 30 minutes of the game is usually spent learning how to build the bridges before you go out in the real world and do it yourself. However, I gotta say, if you're looking to recapture nostalgia of like building with blocks, I just can't really recommend this. I mean, it kind of felt like a, it's just like a job work. It's kind of boring, uninspired. I mean, it really feels like a $10 game with a $19 licensing fee tacked onto it because everything says Lego on it. Outside of that, 
We got to be real though, because what's thirty dollars Lego going to get you these days? Like seven bricks? I mean, that could yeah, be a that'll, bargain. That'll get you like a set, yeah. Yeah, like a pretty primitive one. Uh, if you look at it like that, it could be a value add. But I'm going to say at the end of the day, if you're looking for a creative building game for younger family members during this holiday season, I'm going to suggest Besiege, because uh, yeah, you might as well get away with a little murderation with your engineering. But yes, those chairs were accurate. It does function. It is a native Linux game, gentlemen, which is good. It's good to see companies doing that for the deck. And as Pager pointed out, it makes perfect sense. If you want to deal with, uh, you know, battery savings, smart enough to yeah. do that. It, if you're just like playing it and you want to put it down because you want to look at what you're doing or you want to go uh, to the thing and just look at the diorama as it spins around. Yeah. Uh-huh. 30 FPS is plenty for that. <laughs> there's definitely some text on there. I'm like, there's no way you could read some of that menu text. I, I got I got to say the menu Peter, text is fine. It's just the uh, like the icons to, to identify. Is that the right bumper or the left bumper? You can't read it. That that's impossible. <laughs> I, I gotta say though, the Pedro, you brought up like the the free play mode after you finished the puzzle, and I found it like really limited because like it gives you some cosmetic shit you can stick on the on like your construction, but that's kind of yeah. You have to it. unlock more cosmetic stuff as you progress through the game, right? But, it, it, but it's but a it's, Metroidvania. It's, <laughs> it's all co- it's all cosmetic. You don't you don't get like any like oh, I want to make a crazy bridge and like expand yeah. to some other like. I, like I, I I don't know. I really feel like the the exploration part of this game was paid like very minimal lip service, uh-huh. and like a, a game where you need to like build your way to like get to places would be cool. But that's not what this game is. Yeah, you want to build like Lego Chessatron nine thousand and ride yeah. it and crush the baddies or whatever. But, right. So, yeah. so what 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 we are describing is besiege. So like yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I the blades for arms. Yes, <laughs> for the kids or or or, or the flamethrower penis for you know for kids. All right. Well, coming up next, someone really doesn't like our old chair quizicians because uh-huh. they're, they're they're going through and they're leaving comments, and we're going to talk about that. They found the one other it. person who reviewed it. Finally, I think finally someone took the whole hate mail thing and actually sent us some hate mail. It's been a while. Uh, not that I'm complaining about everyone, you know, showing their uh, appreciation, although that hurts a little bit, but. Uh, imposter syndrome and whatnot but yeah no we got some genuine hate mail and if you saw something because we probably did something you really didn't like this episode and all the other episodes before it they're all available on they're all on youtube rock <laughs> on the internet i guess yeah. cannot be <laughs> listen we, we uh we have 10 years of archives and there are people crawling through them yeah well, there are <laughs> So if you are uh, one of those people with something to say and you want us to really look at it, LinuxGameCast.com, you hit the contact button, fill out the form. Too There's some caveats at the top for other people. Yep. Do you accept <laughs> telegrams? Uh, I'm not on telegram. Someone created no, an no, LGC no. telegram. I, 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 I mean, can I send my courier? Can, can I send oh, a raven? Maybe. <laughs> Our raven would be pretty badass. Do you want the raven back? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, if you want, I mean, if you want to send me a raven, I'm sure. Just saying, <laughs> if I get a pet raven out of the deal, yes. yeah, can I keep the raven? Is the thing, <laughs> is it house broke? <laughs> <laughs> no, it just steals your shit and leaves. <laughs> yeah, but klepto raven, uh, or yeah, whatever. klepto raven. <laughs> I mean, they, 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 they are a bunch of kleptos, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, shiny mine. <laughs> Our first bit comes from, um, we were running around booping some zombies, and this is when we got those big fuck you grenades, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. The uh, the It's the final mission of the main campaign of Back for Blood, where they, they come up with the uh, the anti-zombie formula. I think I think that was the context. And, yeah. And so uh, they're, they're, this is from RK, and they say, uh, that voice would indeed be Candyman, and also Worf's brother, and also a bunch of characters, including the remake of Day and the Dead. So yeah, I was asking if that was Tony Todd, I think was the actor's name. Uh, and yeah, it was it was Tony Todd. I that mean, was, was right. <laughs> they do have the voice acting, because the, the one that really stuck out through um, Back for Blood was uh, not General Hammond. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the general dude. 
who sounded an awful lot like General Ammon. Man, I guy. mean, I'm, Don S. Davis is dead, so like, unless unless they he's back for blood, right? Like, that would- like dude, every time I fucking heard that guy, I just um, saw him in that Stargate Command lean back at his chair, man. I'm yeah, like, yeah, with the with the red phone. Do you yeah. know what that phone dials? But yes, like, uh, you press- you nailed it. You nailed yeah. it, man. Morse brother. I'm like, all right. And once you said that, like, I w- I wouldn't have known the name, but I was like, yeah, yeah. that sound like the guy. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's got he's got a very like distinct voice too. So yeah, That's okay. The only, reason, the only reason I picked it out. Also, I guess I just watch a lot of Star Trek because I'm an unrepentant nerd. So I, hey, I mean, there's only a couple of uh like that Stargate things like that are just great permanent. Background. Yeah, just back, background yeah. noise. Yeah, it's, it's fun, fun sci-fi. Don't have to pay too close attention. It's good stuff. Well, Pedro, uh, somebody kerplot all over our um, recent review of um, Quarren. <laughs> yes, and as Jordan discovered, it was on episode 226. That put it about five years ago. <laughs> okay. Yeah, recent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was Roger Wilco91 uh, oh, about cool. our Quarren Undying Thoughts review. Yeah, I noticed that earlier. So we actually have names down there. You don't <laughs> want to know how my dumb, how long it took me to make that. <laughs> It's embarrassing. I, well, well, it I mean, the, the, the turn the turnaround was pretty quick because you you mentioned that on Thursday or the other day. Yeah. And I'm like, and yeah, lo, lo and behold, here they are. I had to fight Pinterest for this, <laughs> and not even this. I had to make this. I only got like half of that. And Pinterest is like, use your Facebook account. And I'm like, I don't use that Facebook because we have a business Facebook account. And I clicked on it, <laughs> and then I get this fucking email. I was like, oh yeah, and by the way, we're just gonna post shit to your timeline, take all your content. I'm like, no, the fuck, you're not. And so, um. <laughs> yeah P- pinterest okay <laughs> i i know they have like a, their own like ping delivery type thing and it was like half of that then i was trying to make it work like on the left side but jordan's name was too long and it wouldn't fit and I was, like, <laughs> resizing it <laughs> so no, just, 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 just drop the end just be like jordan jordan <laughs> rest of the name goes here so what i did is i like split it in half and flip it and stuck it back together so then i was like ah now you're centered and legally distinct Ah, so, and that, the, 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 the Missy Elliott technique. You put your thing down, you flipped it, and reversed it. Goddamn right. Uh, but yes, Roger Wilco uh, saying, Quern is a great game and as close to missed without being missed that I have played. What a condescending and ill spirited, air quotes, review. Are they um, air quotes when they're written down? Um, they're just uh, regular quotes. Uh, I would like to address the court. Uh, did the fucking wizard ropes and the lawn chairs give it away, Brad? <laughs> Did it? <laughs> look, uh, I had to actually go and look at what I had written down because, again, five years ago. Uh, and, uh, yeah, no, that was exactly what I remembered of that game. It was asinine and obtuse to uh, navigate the world because you could only navigate the world in one specific way. And if you didn't immediately see where the puzzle was... Because it wasn't easy, it was a stupidly detailed map with a lot of fluff, and one of those bits of fluff was a puzzle that you needed to solve, so it wasn't a very good game. It looked pretty, but as a game, not very good. Well, I mean, here's one of the things that you need to always keep in mind. Um, Outside of the wizard robes and lawn chairs, um, (laughs) since that seems to be a stumbling block with you, is we're also grading it on the technical acuity uh being able to run under linux and at that time you rewind six years ago shit was a bit rough around the edges well yeah, you, you, for, even then like varied. it it i mean look i'm looking at the review right now it actually scored pretty well on technical where it lost is that like pedro and i don't like mist as the genre so shit man no you're the, supposed to just give it a free pass because it was a, a, a spiritual successor to miss li- I mean, li- li- listen you you don't have to pay attention or like even like like our reviews the entire point of having three people is you get a wide variety of opinion and you can synthesize your own hopefully I mean, it's got an 83 percent on um, metacritic for fuck's sake so it's not complete dog poo yeah, some 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 people don't like you games. ruined some my streak of confirmation bias. Now you get this. Stop no, disliking you, you, what you're, I you're, like. You're, you're, be, you're being you're being ill spirited and condescending, Pedro. Yeah, you yes. said bad things. You didn't like what I like, so you're ill spirit, man. Wait, come on, man. Don't 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 be a no no no. That, what, what 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 I just did was ill spirited and condescending. The review was pretty. Oh, I, I thought I opened pretty strong with the wizard robes and the uh, uh, chairs. Yeah, right. See, like. <laughs> There, 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 there's, there's the difference. We- it's, it's like that's like you, you, you haven't seen condescending. 
I mean, I'm this surprised even we didn't actually form. get more hate mail for other reviews. <laughs> that's because, because Pedro. That's because most people, again, see the wizard robes and the launchers, <laughs> and they go, oh, "I get it. Uh, they're doing a all right, okay, nah. all right, whatever." Listen, Some people we, we just, don't we, we just, power we gotta, right through that. We get. We got to stick to our. We got to stick to our lane, which is Amiga games. Amiga games. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Strider. Uh, thank you. <laughs> You've defined that for us. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to consend our way right the fuck out of here. Thanks for showing up, hanging out with us on this Saturday night or Sunday morning, wherever you may be, Sunday afternoon in Space Australia, as is tradition. We're going to roll some credits and get out of here, but uh, I got to do, uh, you can always find me on Twitter, at Finstone. I'm doing uh, things on Twitter, like posting stuff, because I think that's what you're supposed to do on there. I'm not 100% on that. Or just at Vin on our federated timeline, Mastodon, mast.linuxemcast.com. Always hanging out in Discord. IRC, if you go into the live channel, it relays to our Discord live channel, or just at Reply Me on Twitch. I'm usually around. Pretty easy to get hold to. I'm Jordan. I'm mean spirited. I'm condescending. And best of all, I'm incredibly vexatious. If you want to make me feel, make you feel something, I don't know, you can follow me on Twitter at The Burning Fool or twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. And I guess if you want to make Jordan feet something, uh, there's an OnlyFans for that. 30,000 but... feet, bitch. <laughs> no, 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 listen, I, I'm not in any House of the Dragon thing. I am not a queen. I could be uh, you if you make be. me one, though. <laughs> you absolutely could be. But uh, Bro, you can see. always find me on Twitter. How do you think Jordan would fit on the iron chair? I would yeah. listen. Look, no, like I would get, I would <laughs> get cut up worse trophy. than old. No, like you know, you know how Viserys got all cut up. I would just be like fucking pulled pork, man. I'd just be a giant pile of pussy. It, it folds in on weak kings. Yeah, yeah. At unaccounted for on Twitter, that's the best way to get a touch right. with and, and strong glutes. Yeah. Mmm, <laughs> war crimes. I mean, it is a guy. biological weapon. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's wax. <laughs> you can load them into guns and shoot children with candy corn. I don't know where you I'm got going a fixation with, with attacking children this evening. <laughs> I you need to dial do. Back a little bit. I got. I got to Thank our advisors, Omega Star Theron, our executive producers, Barb Ramp, Scott Michaud, Atomic Ass, uh, Mike G, Mike T, uh, Drummer Kohaku, George Pebble, Tomaj It's the it's the House of the Dragon. That's what did it. It's the claw abstraction fights. and super deaths. So it's bringing in the Chicago's and all the ass kickings. And sea yes. monsters, Renoa, Rider X, Machina, Trudgy, Veritanuda, Justin, Frostclaw, Nelvin, David, Darkwing, System T, and D Dancing Joe. There we <laughs> go. Death Notes, Nova, Basil, Chris, Dodger, Xanthrus Game, Turnover, Stein, Foxy, Leonardo, <laughs> Stephen B. Boy, love the And Dodger. The Ooh. Chairlings, Jason B, Lord Maka, AJ, Brock Y, Shivani, Joanna, Gronk Delanka, Paul P, Greg L, Costa, North C. Ranger, Craig, Carte, Linux Noob, Ryan TG, Fast Cat, Rosmawada, Mark, <laughs> Mark, <laughs> Fine Upstanding Edibles, Carl, Mike, Arthur, and Linux New, Aldeus, Noctilus, John Eshep, Imadron, and you know it. Don't worry, it's almost time for Christmas, Frank. Almost. No, I mean, Pedro, you it don't depends if you go into Tesco's. It's already Christmas time. <laughs> I said Christmas Frank, bitch. <laughs> oh, oh, Christmas we'll Frank. Oh, Christmas Frank. <laughs> Five dudes. <laughs>